in this presentation we will talk about the triggering methods now before actually going into the triggering and the different types of triggering available to us let us first talk about that which part of the sequential circuit we have to trigger okay so if you remember sequential circuit is nothing but the combinational circuit with the memory so you are having your combinational circuit here the input is given to it and the output is generated now the state the state of this circuit is stored in the memory and you already know that this memory is nothing but the latch or the flip-flops okay I will explain you the difference between latch and flip-flop when we call the memory element as latch and when we call it as flip-flop in the next presentation so this is the memory a latch or flip-flop and a clock pulse is given to it this clock pulse is the control input okay you already know this in the last presentation I explained you now what we have to trigger in this sequential circuit we have to trigger this memory element okay the state is stored in this latch or flip-flop is switched switched means change from the one state to the other state depending upon the input and the previous state stored in it it is changed or switched by the change in the control input this clock pulse when changes it will cause the change in the latches or flip-flops and what will change in the latch or flip-flop the stored state whatever the state of this circuit will be changed depending upon the clock pulse so we have to trigger this memory element our latch or flip-flop and this transition we call as the triggering of the flip-flop so this is what we have to trigger and now let's move to the other part of this lecture in which we will talk about the different type of triggering methods available to us you already know the clock looks something like this low to high then low again high and then low and it repeats the duty cycle for the clock is 50 percent now for the different portion of this clock we can have the triggering of our latches or flip-flop so I can divide the triggering methods into two types the first one is your level triggering and the second one is your edge triggering so in level triggering what we have actually in level triggering whenever the clock remains in high there will be transition in your latches and flip-flop similarly when it is high here there will be change or transition in your latches and flip-flop this we call as the level triggering whenever you are having clock as high the change in the circuit will happen now in edge triggering let's talk about edge triggering it is of two types the first one is your positive edge triggering and the second one is your negative edge triggering so let's make a clock and we'll try to understand what is positive edge triggering and your negative edge triggering so this is my clock and uh, I will say that this memory element will trigger when this clock goes from low to high this is low and this one is high and at this point the clock is low and when it goes from low to high there will be change in the memory element it will switch from one state to other state similarly again when it is going from low to high there will be change okay so this is your positive edge triggering let's see what happens in the negative edge triggering in case of negative edge triggering it's very simple once you have done with your positive edge triggering when the clock is at high and it goes to low there will be transition in our memory element similarly at this point it is high and when it goes from high to low again there will be transition so these are the triggering methods available to us and it's important to understand this simple thing before we actually proceed to our flip-flops because sometimes it creates confusion so now it's clear for you so in the next presentation we are going to find out what is the difference between the latch and the flip-flop so see you in the next one